the Will to Intervene project was born of the alliance between General Romeo Dallaire and the Montreal Institute for Genocide and Human Rights Studies, which we call MIGS for short. Pourquoi l'Institut Montréalais d'études sur la génocide des droits de la personne? Mais c'est le seul centre de recherche unique à Montréal, au Québec et au Canada qui regarde ce sujet, qui regarde ces enjeux et qui essaie de travailler et donner la recherche, pas seulement aux étudiants, mais aussi à nos gouvernements pour que la recherche soit utilisée pour, pour prévenir les atrocités de masse. Le projet La Volonté d'intervenir va être dévoilé le 21 septembre à Washington, à l'Institut américain de paix. Et on fera un autre, euh, le dévoilement euh, de nos recherches sera lieu à Ottawa le 22 septembre euh, en conférence de presse. Le contexte de notre projet est ce. Le général Dallaire a été laissé à se tenir à en Rwanda, avec no aucun soutien support, while a million de personnes ont été tuées tout autour de lui. Maintenant, dans la République démocratique du Congo, and in other countries, we face very similar conditions. And unless we mobilize the will to intervene in Canada and in the United States, the countries that are most capable of preventing genocide will stand by impotently and uselessly. We summarize our concrete practical recommendations under three headings. Leadership, coordination, and capacity building. In both countries, Canada and the United States, the President and the Prime Minister must proclaim the prevention of mass atrocities as a national interest of their government. Once that's done, they must create offices and appoint leaders within the government to guide the prevention of genocide through early warning and they must coordinate that policy by sharing information across all relevant government departments. The armed forces, as well as the foreign aid agencies of Canada and the United States, must be built in the future in order to help prevent genocide, hopefully without actually using force by intelligently distributing and allocating foreign aid in time to aid conflict resolution. So we never have to use the military again as we have in Afghanistan and other places. So it's vital that President Obama and Prime Minister Harper and their successors commit themselves publicly and durably to preventing mass atrocities. Et nous avons aussi des recommandations également pour les médias et les ONG. C'est-à-dire que les, les médias ont un rôle très important à mobiliser la volonté euh, politique, la, la volonté d'intervenir. Euh, souvent, sans les médias qui regardent sur un problème, une crise euh, en haute mer, euh, les, les politiciens ne vont pas réagir, ne vont pas prendre comme ça pour, pour être un sujet important. Et aussi, pour les ONG, on les dit, on, on donne des, des propositions pour qu'ils euh, puissent... Euh, Met plus de pression sur le gouvernement. We learned some very important lessons from our study of Rwanda and the Kosovo and Yugoslav problems. The most important lesson was that the public health, security from terrorism and piracy, and the commercial prosperity of Canada and the United States are harmed by neglecting these mass atrocities in faraway places like Rwanda, the Congo, etc. We act in our own self-interest. We act to implement humanitarian principles, but first of all, we act in our own self-interest. And this was the message that nobody got in the 1990s and that few people get today. Look at what happens when we fail to act. Take the case of Rwanda. Eight different countries were destabilized. The spread of disease, the spread of anarchy and chaos, mass rape of women, the spread of HIV AIDS, drug resistant tuberculosis, the seedbeds of future pandemics in North America, 
This destabilization affects all of us in the global village that we live in today. That's why we have to act.